fellow designers it's karen of karen gwen customs today i am giving you guys a video about my new industrial sewing machine the reliable 2300 sz this is going to be a two-part video and the first part is going to be more of a vlog showing where i got the machine from how it looked as it was getting delivered the unboxing setting it up and in the second part i'm going to show you guys how to wind the bobbin thread the machine and how to sew the straight and the zigzag stitch so if you're interested in this machine or industrial machines in general this is the video for you before we get started be sure to like comment subscribe share this video with a friend that may be interested in my content and when you hit the notification bell change it from personalized to all so that you get notified every time i upload one of these helpful videos also wanted to let you guys know for those of you that are waiting for the instructional videos on how to use the dressmaking primer i promise those are coming soon i'm working to make sure that they are perfect um so thank you guys so much for your patience but let's get started um talking about the reliable 2300 sc so this is the website I ordered my machine from, sewingmachinesplus.com. It is the Reliable 2300SZ, and it has a straight and zigzag stitch, which is why I chose it. The cost is $899, but um, there are some additional fees, so you will be paying more than that. It has to ship by freight, which is a $300 charge, depending on where you live. Um, it does include a one-year warranty. After um, all the extra fees and everything, you are gonna be probably looking at around $1,200. And they do also offer financing through Synchrony Bank, which is a credit card that you can get specifically for this store that will give you 18 months to pay it off. Off, no interest it took about a month for me to get my machine delivered after i ordered it that's because it was actually drop shipped from canada so i placed the order with um sewing machines plus and then they placed an order with reliable who fulfilled the order um reliable is the company that makes the machine here is the delivery guy unloading it off the truck and he actually did help my husband carry it into the house so that was really nice of him because i think a lot of times they don't do that um, the machine is attached to the pallet with some metal um, things. It's like straps or something, and you have to have some wire cutters to cut it off. So make sure you have that on deck, especially in case they just leave the machine in your driveway and don't help you. <laughs> Okay, so here's my machine. I just opened it. Um, that box right there, the little box my daughter's holding is the wheels for the bottom of the machine. <laughs> and then this uh, light blue box is the, um, the light for the machine. Um, the sewing machine looks really good. And there's like a little brick on the table right here but it feels kind of sticky so it's probably something i can clean off but other than that like it looks perfect and i'm really excited there is instructions there's a little drawer right here which i'm excited about and it has a manual yeah okay here's everything that comes in the drawer there's these two round foam circles Looks like a little bottle of oil. A bag of metal parts. Um, some screwdrivers. Some washers, needles. They were definitely bobbins, not washers. Okay, so this long metal thing right here is the pedal uh, control. So like when it gets pulled, it controls the sewing machine. And it was turned with this little thing facing that way. So I just had to grab it towards the middle right here and twist it so that it was facing towards me. And then here is the foot pedal. So you just have to insert it into the hole. I guess it depends on, uh, yeah, that's how it's going to be. You have to insert it into the hole. 
I didn't know if I should put it in the middle hole or the side hole, but I just peeped at someone else's YouTube video and they put it in this one. So that's where I'm going to put mine. And I'm about to tighten this little screw here. I guess I'm supposed to take the screw off, stick the thing into the hole, and then screw the screw back onto the other side. So we end up having to loosen this little screw thing um, for the flick pedal because the bars were not giving us enough length and it was making it so when I wasn't pressing the flick pedal. So made that a little bit longer. And then it also came with this lamp and all you have to do to connect it to the table is unscrew this thing and then put it over the table and tighten it until it's tight power button is right there and it has different settings for the brightness. Okay, the first thing that you want to do is take the thread you'll be using and you want to sit it on top of your um, thread holder, I believe it's called a thread unwinder. Now up here, you will see there is a little hole and you're just going to push your thread, you zoom in if I can. You're just gonna push your thread through the back of the hole to the front of the hole so that the thread is coming back towards you. Next thing that you're going to do is bring your thread down. Um, this is kind of the direction that your, I don't know what this is called, but this is the direction it should be facing. There's two holes on the side of the little circular thing and you're going to take your thread and bring it from the back through the front of this first hole like so then you're going to wrap the thread around in between these two metal plates and then on this side you're going to bring your thread through that hole going that way all the while making sure that your thread is still passing through those two metal plates so that's that part Next, you're gonna bring your thread over to the bobbin area here. There's a hole in the top of your bobbin and you're just going to, this is optional, but I always like to do it this way. Stick my thread up through the hole in the bobbin and then you're gonna sit it down on the bobbin holder. This thing flips out and it flips in, um, but you'll notice when I have it like more towards the middle of its turning uh, range, that's when the bobbin holder is moved all the way to the edge of the little round thing. And so that's the position that you want it to be in that's going to allow the thread to wind when you are pressing on the foot pedal. So you'll see I press the foot pedal right now and it's going to start winding. So I let it wind a little bit and you can see there is some thread under there that has started to wind on the bobbin and there is supposedly some trick you can do to get the needle to stop uh, moving as you're winding the bobbin. I haven't figured that out but it doesn't matter. The most important thing is that we want to get our bobbin wound. Once I have um, a significant amount of thread on the bobbin, I just snip this extra piece off and then um, I continue to wind the bobbin and I do this with any of my machines. Um, haven't figured out if there's a way to get it perfect without doing this, but I just use my finger to kind of guide the thread so that it goes up and down on the bobbin evenly and I don't get like all my thread just on the top or on the bottom or whatever.
Okay, so my bobbin's like full. And again, this is just what I learned from watching other YouTube videos. There isn't any specific videos for the this particular machine on YouTube from what I have found, but this machine is very diff, uh, similar to the Singer 20U machine. And um, that's just what's helped me like figure out how to do this. So if anybody like notices anything that I'm doing that I could be doing differently or in a better way, feel free to leave it in the comments below. But this is just my little quick, quick start beginner friendly. Tip. Next thing you're going to do is replace your bobbin. And um, there's two ways to do this. First way is to reach under your machine and push this little flap up and slide it over. I personally prefer to just fold my whole machine back so that I can see better what I'm doing. And all you do is just push it backwards and then it's gonna fold back and you can lay it back on the table. Now, here is your bobbin holder. And when you go to remove your bobbin, I'm just gonna show you what it looks like. That's what it's going to look like when there's already a bobbin in there and the bobbin case is engaged. And you're just going to pull this little flap with your finger to pick it up. And there would be a bobbin in there um, to begin with when you first get your machine. Okay, the next thing you're going to do is hold your bobbin case like this. And then you wanna put your bobbin into the bobbin case with the thread going left to right. Just put it in like that. Then you're going to guide your thread over and there's a little slit right here. You're gonna pull it down and then you're gonna pull it back this way. So pull it down, pull it back that way until it goes into this little hole right here. And then I just snip it off. I don't know if you have to do this, but I just do so there's like less of a tail hanging. And then you're gonna put it back in your machine. So look, there is the bobbin case and you're going to pick up that little flap. Have the flap laying horizontally and you're just going to slide it back in there and yeah the flap is supposed to be going that way and then now that we have that back together you're going to sit your machine back upright and now we're going to go ahead and thread the machine okay for threading the machine you start off with the first step the same as winding the bobbin you're going to bring your thread up through this thing and then we're going to bring our thread over here to this little metal bar that has the three holes in it. We're only gonna be using two of the holes and you're going to take your thread and stick it through this top hole going from right to left. And then you're gonna bring it back this way, skip the middle hole and bring it back through the bottom hole again going from right to left, okay? So that's that step. Okay, so we got that little metal bar out of the way. Now we're gonna take the thread, bring it back through this flap thing here. I don't know what these parts are called, y'all, sorry. Just watch closely. So you're gonna bring it through there, and then you're going to wrap it around. There's two metal plates here. You want it to go in between the two metal plates and bring it all the way around staying in between the two metal plates okay once you have wrapped it all the way around you're gonna bring it in front of this little there's like a little thin um black uh thin wire i don't know what it's called again but you're going to bring your thread so that it's wrapping uh, or pulling on that wire. So you're gonna bring the thread in front of the wire and then pull it back, okay? Now, you're then going to bring the thread down under this uh, 
silver bar. And my instruction booklet told me that after this, or from my understanding, it said that after this, I should bring it up through here. But I noticed that when I did that, my thread kept getting stuck on this screw right here and it was breaking my thread. So after coming through this metal bar, I take my thread and I go back through this silver flap here so that it gets pulled back that way. And then as you can see, there is a metal bar here, or not a bar, it's a, it's a metal something that has a hole in it. You're gonna take your thread and push through the hole from one side to the other. Then you're going to pull it through this little thing here to the left. And then down here, there's a little spiral thing. It should go through. This little button right here brings your needle back up if it's laying that sitting down. <clears throat> so then make sure your needle is up. Once you pass your thread through the little spiral thing, there is a hole right on top of your needle in the front. And you're going to bring your thread down through that hole. The needle on here, the, um, the hole goes front to back. So you're just going to pass front to back. I know on a lot of industrial machines, it goes left through to right. But on this particular one, it goes front to back. You're gonna bring it through like that. And then there's two options to pick up your presser foot. One is this knee bar. So when you are sitting, let me pick this up now. Okay, so when you're sitting at your machine, your knees will be like this. So when you hit that knee bar, your presser foot will raise up. If you don't wanna use the knee bar, which is the easiest thing because it's hands-free, then there's also a presser foot lever back here that will raise the presser foot up and let it back down. I'm gonna show y'all really quickly how to sew on here. Um, some things you should know when you're getting ready to sew. This is where your attention is. On a commercial or home machine, there will be a dial with numbers on it. This dial does not have numbers. It has just this notch right here. And the way you can tell like how tight it is, is by trying to focus. You can see a, a thin wire that like is coiled right there. And the closer your knob is, the less exposed the wires are. That means the tighter your tension is and the more of the wire, the coil you can see, that means your tension is looser. So I had to play with this a lot to get it exactly where I wanted it to be. And the way I kind of keep track of how much I've turned it is I just turn it a quarter of a turn every time. So if I think this is too loose, then I would turn it this way till the notch is facing upwards and that's a quarter turn for me and I just keep adjusting by turning it this way is tighter this way is looser so to adjust your tension you just turn left to go looser right to go tighter and that's something that you're going to have to play around with until you feel like you have the right tension on your machine because like I said unlike your home machine there are no numbers so you're just going to kind of have to play with it and figure it out now over here is the um, the thing that allows you to go from a zigzag to a straight stitch. So right now, it's set on straight stitch because this little triangle is pointing to this notch right here. If I wanted it to be on a zigzag stitch, I would loosen this screw up here and then I would turn it this way, okay? So I'm gonna show y'all the straight stitch first. And then this one here um, controls how, um, I believe it controls how long your stitches are. So how many, um, I don't remember the unit of measurement, but right here I have it set at 2.5. And that's what I do for my straight stitch. 
and um, when I get ready to do the zigzag stitch, I'll show y'all how I adjust it. So just gonna do a straight stitch real quick. I just have some milliskin. I'm gonna fold it over. stop sewing um, you can raise your presser foot pop that needle back up with this button here or if you want to do a reverse stitch you would just lower this lever while you're sewing now I'm gonna press this pop my needle up raise my presser foot pull it out and just cut it and let me lower my light sorry guys my flash went off because my battery is low but here are my stitches that's the top that's the bottom here's what it looks like on the side very secure okay now I'm going to quickly show y'all how to do a zigzag stitch so this is the setting that makes the stitch straight or zigzag all you're going to do is unwind this screw here a little bit so that you can push this lever over to the left when you push it to the left you tighten the screw back and then it's going to stay in place and then um for a zigzag stitch i like to turn this dial i think this screw con controls how tight this dial is but i'm not sure anywho i like to turn this dial back until it says one and a half um Side note guys, this little thing here controls what position your needle is in. Right now I have it in center position. If I wanna move it to the left, I push it in and move it to the left. If I wanna move it back, I push it in and that's how you control that. Moving over here. I'm going to raise my presser foot so. and here's how my zigzag stitches look I think they look pretty good and that is how you operate the Reliable 2300SC. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or tips on anything that I might have missed, please leave them in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.